As the one-year anniversary of Lekki shooting emerges, the police command places a ban on any planned protest. And pro tenubu group South West Agenda for Asuaju launches Swaga in Lagos. This is Cross Politics and I am Mary Anakom. The Lagos State Commissioner for, of Police, Hakim Odumosu, earlier this week warned against any planned protest in the state. Also, the statement signed by the State Police Command spokesperson Adekunle Ajise Butu revealed that the command had received information of a planned protest to mark the one-year anniversary of NSAR's protest. He cautioned that the police would not hesitate to use all legal means to stop the protest from taking place following the experience of the last NSAS protest. In a response to this, the United States human rights group Take It Back movement said that the warning is an invitation to anarchy. Well, joining us to discuss this is Dele Farutimi. He is a retired lawyer. And of course, we are being joined by Inibere Ifyong, who's also a legal practitioner. Thank you very much for joining us, Mr. Farutimi. Oh, we have Inibere joining us also. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. So let's 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 take a step back, you know, a bit and revisit, you know, what happened last year. You know, uh, let's reanalyze the reason for the NSARS movement in the first place, because we're all talking about NSARS. But then most people fail to remember the reason why this movement started in the first place. What became a protest that now resulted in, you know, the lives of people being taken? Let's go back to it. Has the reason for the NSAS protests been addressed? The simple answer is no. NSAS came about because of police misconduct, ranging from extrajudicial killing, extortion of citizens, harassment of innocent Nigerians, framing up people for offenses they have not committed, Detaining people beyond the period allowed by law, delving into stable matters which are not supposed to be the business of the police, violating the rights of violation of the rights of Nigerians, including the right to protest, the right to freedom of expression and peaceful assembly. These were the reasons why young people were fed up with the anomalies and came out in their thousands across the country to demand police reform, to demand the abolition of SARS. SARS was only a symptom of a very terrible disease, which is the police as an institution. So when they claim they had abolished SARS, what we have seen the last one year is that this is clear unwillingness on the part of the federal government, on the part of state governors, on the part of the leadership of the police, and even the police service commission to reform the police. I have not seen any serial indication that the president of the country, the inspector general of police, or any other authority in this country is interested in police reform. Citizens are being still being killed regularly, almost on a daily basis by the police across the country. Nigerians are still complaining online that they are being extorted, they are being forced to withdraw money for corrupt policemen at checkpoints. People are still being detained beyond the period allowed by law. Civic expression like protests is still being disrupted. We have also seen indication now, contrary to the statement of the then Inspector General of Police, the purported directive that all special units were to be disbanded, we have seen that these units have come back in different variations. Policemen are still going about without uniforms, heavily armed, raiding people, arresting people by the road. The impunity has not stopped. 
So what I see is that the Nigerian government does not appreciate the gravity of the SARS protest. And that is worrisome because none of us can predict the dimension that the next NSAS or the a similar protest is going to take. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, let me come to you, uh, Mr. Farasimi. It's interesting the position that um, Mr. Effiong has taken. He's insinuating that the government is not interested, security agencies are not interested, the police whom, um, whose department, whose rogue a department was the reason for this protest, which all obviously Meta were forced into, you know, asking for good governance, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, seems also not to be interested in addressing the issues that have been put forward. So again, does it mean that the efforts, the blood, the tears, the sweat of young people, young Nigerians who were dissatisfied with what was happening, um, has gone in vain? Does it mean that the reason for this protest in the first instance? Is in, it has, is, has become an exercise in futility. Did it even hit any nerves or did it even cause for any change or any rippling effects? Well, um, well, first, let me first of all apologize for the several technical issues I seem to be having. Welcome to Nigeria of our birth and sojourn. Now, let me... Inibe is not too far from being right, but I will look at the same set of facts and interpret them slightly differently. I think I will do this perhaps with the benefit of age. Inibe would come to know Nigeria for what it is a little better as we go along. It's not like they don't understand the gravity. They understand the gravity quite all right. But they have gained it and they have concluded that nothing will come out of it. They have concluded that quarter quarter they will kill another set that they might need to kill because we don't ever we don't ever appear to have clarity as to what even we who seek changes and who have asked for Nigeria to change we don't appear to be quite clear as to exactly what we want. So the system, our rulers are always very clear about what they want. So they've gamed it. A year ago, they killed, which we can't even establish how many. That is just to tell you the ease with which lives can be discounted in Nigeria. So, and within the same Nigeria, we had a lot of people come out on behalf of the same government. Pure everyday Nigeria, not even beneficiaries of the system, happy to help the system to perpetuate the lies that nothing happened. When you have this kind of environment, in this kind of society, the system has claimed it that at the end of the day, they will give us 2023 election to start debating. So in place of any substantive changes, what you find is that now a lot of youth are being distracted and they are being asked to go and register to vote as though the system within which they are being asked to vote were to be one that has any space for them in any way, shape, or form. So it's not like they don't know. They know, but they have gained it and concluded that ultimately they would be able to ride through the storm. If you look at the way they've handled the panels, with the exception of the one in Lagos, I must say that the one in Lagos, because it's been kept on its toes, with the re relentless effort of a lot of people who have made up their minds that as much as possible, that panel must be helped to do his work, which is to find the facts. Other than that, the state has just concluded that it can ride this storm, that nothing will come out of it. Like Inibe has said, and I align myself completely with this, it's just a matter of time. You can't keep suppressing the truth by sheer force of harms. Mm -hmm. Eventually, the state would have to deal with the substantive issues of the inequities because the NSAS protest is just a parable for several things. There is a system that allowed NSAS, that, that allowed the SARS unit. That system of impunity that allows the SARS unit is the same one that is allowing all the other things that the NSAS protesters started cutting on to as the protest progressed because it moved from NSAS, which is merely a unit, to end impunity, to end bad governance, to end this and end that that is negative about Nigeria, which was what got the government jittery. So let's understand that for a season, 
darkness might seem to have prevailed. But it is inevitable that the dawn would come. You can't keep, this can last. It's just a matter of time. They've just bought time. That's all up. But they bought time. That's the only thing I'll say. For how long? We'll find out soon enough. I want to pick up on something that you said, um, that the politicians, the political class, obviously knows what they want and they, 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 they plan for it, as opposed to us. Now, I want to make reference to certain naysayers, uh, people who criticize the NSAS movement. I, was, I had a young person here yesterday who said, uh, I'd like to quote him, that they did not have a leadership of sorts, and so they did not have a direction, someone they could, uh, that could direct them or they could take orders from. I do not know if that sits well with you, but um, they're saying that the reason why it played out the way it played out and was seemingly unsuccessful was because they all said, we don't want a leader. Uh, do you think that that's why the whole protest broke down? Do you think that that's why um, it was infiltrated in the first instance? Or maybe no, they came on too strong? Um, I think it is critical that we do not allow the state to reshape the narrative of the NSAS protest. The NSAS protest was a coming of age. The Nigerian youth, the one who came after us, who seemingly inherited a democracy, came to the point where they came to realize that they were not in a democracy. Now, whether they had organized and had elected leaders for their protest or not, would have made no difference to the response of the Nigerian state and its rulers. His responses were always predictable. And if you really think about it, my generation had recognized leaders when we went to protest. There, was a, there were proper structures. Nans had a structure, ASU had structures, the NLC had structures, Nupenga had structures. There were, there were several structures. But those structures actually made it much easier for the Nigerian state to either compromise the leaders of those unions or to victimize them. So this particular decision by those who spearheaded or at least grew the protest called answers was a lesson learned from our own generation. But the reality is that it is only a fusion of what we had learned in our time, the energy of the young ones today, and a clear vision for what the future should hold that can galvanize us into that future. But for anyone, particularly someone in your own generation, to presume to apportion blame as it relates to what he considers leadership vacuum or leadership failure, it says a lot about his person, not really about the NSAS protesters. Because if he had these ideas, where was he when his mates were busy standing on the streets for ideals he apparently subscribes to, but which he's not willing to sacrifice for. That is the typical Nigerian. They can't do it, they won't do it, but any other person doing it must be criticized. They always know what went wrong, but they never have any idea to improve what is ongoing. Hmm. Interesting. Back to you, Nibere. It's a year later. Um, I mean... The, the anniversary or, or the start of this protest. Um, of course, October 20 is going to be, of course, the, the remembrance for those who uh, were at the toll gate on that day. But let's talk about the protest in its entirety. It's one year later. Already the Lagos State Police Command is issuing uh, statements and warnings as to these protests. And, and I was curious, when I was getting ready um, you know, for this show, I was thinking to myself, there are pending issues. Like um, Daley said, we're still having, um, you know, the Lagos uh, panel sit, even though, you know, it's neither here nor there. There's so many things hanging, you know, in the balance. But then the police is issuing these statements saying, oh, they hear that this is going to happen and so we cannot protest. So I want to ask you, because you are a lawyer, is there anything in the Constitution that says that the police can tell us when not to, and when we can protest. Is there any such thing in the Constitution? Because I have had many police officers, either the IGPs or commissioners on my show, and I've asked the same question. Where in the Constitution says that we have to take permission from the police before we protest, as this is supposedly a right for every human? The current commissioner of police in Lagos State, Mr. Odumos, I hope I got the pronunciation right. Yes. Has a very 
unadmirable history of disregarding the rule of law. The man seems disconnected from democracy. He cannot appreciate why citizens should express themselves. He cannot understand why Nigerians should be aggrieved, why Lagosians should come out to express their opinion on issues of concern. And he has consistently, over time, clamped down on peaceful protesters, assaulted journalists, led invasion of protest venues, peaceful protest venues, and he continues to serve the corrupt elite without any regard for human rights, without any regard for democracy, without any regard to his statutory responsibilities. But to your question, we need to say clearly and emphatically, there is nothing under the Constitution, there is nothing under the Police Act of 2020, there is nothing under the laws of Lagos State or any other law for that matter in this country that empowers the police to detect when, where, or for what reason citizens should gather peacefully and express themselves. The right to freedom of expression, we must remind the Commissioner of Police, is one that is guaranteed under Section 39 of the Constitution. It is a right that in us, both to Nigerians in Lagos State and other parts of the country. So it is not in the mouth, it does not lie in the mouth of the Commissioner of Police to say when citizens can protest or when they cannot protest. In fact, and as a matter of law, even where or when the Commissioner of Police or the police is of the opinion that woodlums, so-called woodlums, as they always say, will infiltrate or hijack the protest. The law is that the police has no right to disrupt that protest. All that they can do is to protect the protesters and ensure that hoodlums do not succeed in their plan. But again, this is a lawless institution. This is an institution that has pinched itself against the Nigerian people. And they continue to display this arrogant attitude that they can detect to Lagosians or detect to Nigerians when they are supposed to protest. The Commission of Police has no business telling Nigerians that they cannot celebrate or protest in commemoration of the anniversary of NSAT. In fact, by his statement, he's indirectly telling us that NSAT protest was justified, that those who came out to protest for SARS to be abolished, for police to be reformed, had a legitimate reason to do so. Hmm. So his statement is only a vindication of the protesters because it shows how rotten the institution of the police is for you to still have a commissioner of police still talking in this manner as if Nigeria is a police state, as if we are under a military dictatorship. Hmm. But let me say this in the case of Charles Oputa and Inspector General of Police and others, where I represented Mr. Charles Oputa, aka Charlie Boy, the police said that they had intelligence report that hoodlums were going to hijack the resume of resigned protests in Abuja at the Unity Fountain. And my position was that you cannot disrupt the protest because you have flimsy intelligence report that who loves to infiltrate it. And the court agreed that you cannot stop people from protesting simply on account of your belief that that protest will turn violent. It is your responsibility to be there to ensure that that does not happen. And this is also reinforced by the Electoral Act as amended in 2015, which has expressly stated that the role of the police during protests shall be limited to provision of security to the protesters. Hmm. So what the CP is supposed to do is to go to the venue of the protest and protect those who are protesting. For him to sit in his office and arrogantly say that nobody should come out to protest, that he would deal with anybody that is planning to protest. It is an insult on democracy. It is an assault on the rule of law. And it is a further demonstration that this is an institution that is will, unwilling to reform, that is unwilling to respond to the demands of civilization. Okay. Um, Mr. Farrell, I mean, the police is making claims, just as um, Inibaga has said, um, that there's credible information, according to them, at their disposal, uh, letting them know that there might just be some um, youths who might want to take over the protest. But from what Inibaga is saying, there seems to be certainty on the part of the police that they have the right to call the shots. But 
We also know what happened early this year. Do you remember when um, the Lagos panel, um, there was a reaction to what, um, some of the you know, yeah. messaging coming from the, the Lagos panel reopen, and yeah. people wanted to protest. Do you remember what happened? We saw the police in its full, fullest force at the toll gate. Passers-by were being arrested. They were being dragged. We remember, we saw the very famous Debo uh, dragged into a police van. And we saw all kinds of things happen. So, again, why would the average young Nigerian who's tired of bad leadership, who's tired of being wrongly profiled by police officers, who's been uh, fleeced of his hard-earned money, or, um, you know, who's been harassed by the police, want to come out in protest. I mean, he does want to protest, but he's scared that he might be, um, you know, apprehended by the police and wrongly charged. Why would anybody want to really stick their head out at this point? You know, when my brother Inibe was talking, I was laughing. I was laughing because with every word he said, he was vindicating my decision to run away from anyone addressing me as a lawyer. He just stated the position of the law. He's, he quoted the law eloquently. He stated the position of the law eloquently. But we are not a state ruled by law. Nigeria is not. How do you mean? How do you mean? Law. The constitution is supreme in Nigeria. What do you what mean? What constitution? You see, this is the problem we all have. Which constitution? Decree 24? The policeman who is meant to enforce the law knows that there are no laws to be enforced. All he has to do is make sure that he works to administer the impunity that governs Nigeria. How dare the police commissioner, how dare he, or any other person who is governed by law, speak out against the trash that just, just to even speak out and be presume to curtail the rights of citizens, quote and unquote, but he knows we are not citizens. This is the part where I feel sorry for the like of Inibe, who continues to believe that this system has any respect whatsoever for the law that it presumes to foster everybody's truth. The reality is that Odumosu has never pretended to be a law enforcement officer. He is essentially essentially the police arm of the Lagos army. The ones that the people, the, the ones that the MCO almost of this world cannot handle, the like of him and do. Let's be clear. Where does he find the power? Under what law? Which law? Person to what law does he make the pronouncements that he makes in relation to rights that are enshrined in what they call a constitution. So you're insinuating that the, 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 the Lagos State I'm Police Command is lawless and Lagos State in itself is lawless? No, no, I'm not insinuating. I am saying categorically that Nigeria is not a country ruled by law because if it were to be a country ruled by law, Akim Odumosu should be in a jail somewhere for consistently consistently violating the constitutional rights of Nigerians. But because we are not in a country ruled by law, as long as he is doing the will of his political masters, there is nothing that will happen to him. So are Our you saying that you have lost faith count. in the... Are you saying, Mr. Farron, to me, that you have lost hope yes. and faith in the Nigerian state and that there is no hope Let's be clear about this. I lost hope and faith in the Nigerian state as it is long before I left the university because I already knew what it was back then. But then you Let went on to be a lawyer, didn't you? I had to earn a living and I also had to know the law so that I would know exactly how to avoid getting into their traps. The reality is that Nigeria is not a country ruled by law. I just showed you the evidence. Look. Inibe just quoted law for you. I don't even remember sections again. I believe it's section 39 now. We have a right, so-called, under the law. The citizen has a right. That right is constitutional. The courts have equally ruled. They've made it clear. They've made it clear. It's not for a lack of knowledge of what the legal position is. 
that these people are doing these things. But they are doing it because they know that the law does not matter. What matters are their own will. When a state is ruled by the will of men, that is not a state ruled by law. That is a state governed okay. by impunity. Okay. Nigeria is not ruled by law. The sooner we all wrap our minds around it, the better. Okay. It is not ruled by law. Okay. Uh, Inibara, finally, uh, we, let's talk about justice for um, these people who um, were either injured, people who lost family members. Let's not forget that recently, I think I had that talk with you uh, where um, the, they were able to match the bullets uh, with that of the Nigerian army. And you sounded more, uh, you sounded more off-putting, like it, nothing was going to be done about it. Now, here we are. How do we access the dividends of democracy? How do we get accountability as Nigerians under a state where we should be operating a democracy? even though our rights to protest, which is one of the very important tools in getting a uh, dividend of democracy, is being stifled. How then do we get our leaders to be accountable to us? How do we get the dividends? How do we even get our leaders to be responsible to us in any way, if this is the picture that you and Delia are painting to me? I allied myself with Mr. Faro to me that Nigeria is a lawless country. It is a country ruled by impunity. Because, you see, the question you are asking, is one that should worry all of us. One year after, one year, no single soldier, military officer has been court martialed on account of the killings that took place at Lake Ito Gate. The, 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 the assault on protesters across the... Look at the number of people that were killed during the protest in Lagos alone. Look at the number. As even established by the state pathologists before the Lagos Judicial Commission of Inquiry. Till today... The answers panel across the states are not functioning. Save for Lagos, some states have wound up. Some states like, like Cross River, Gugi, and others, the panels are not functioning. Lagos is the only state, to my knowledge, I think Ogun also came up with a small amount, that has set up some monetary compensation for victims of police brutality, which was one of the key demands. Even the federal government, till date, has not told us how much they are going to compensate Nigerians whose cases have been established before these panels. There is no attempt at accountability. There is no attempt at justice or compensation. So that is why I am telling you that by the actions of the regime, the Kwari regime, by the actions of these governors, there is a clear invitation on Nigerian youth to go for answers part two. That is the implication. It is either we are ruled by the rule of law or anarchy is going to continue to pervert the land. You cannot insist that there should be peace, and at the same time, you are actively working against justice. Both cannot coexist. All when right. there is injustice, people have to respond. That is the truth of the matter. Well, I want to say thank you, Dele Farah, to me, Nibare Fiong. Thank you so much for being part of this conversation. We appreciate it. Pleasure. Thank you. All right. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break now. And when we return, a group campaigning for the former Lagos State Governor and leader of the All Progressive Congress in Nigeria, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, is launching its campaign. We'll be back shortly. Stay with us.